Hi, hello, my name is Ollie Bliss and this is my channel Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and occasionally I create images out of it. Today I am going through my recent hauling activities and also just kind of catching up in terms of where, the, uh, where I've been, which has enabled me to go and purchase these wonderful books. So I thought I would just share with you uh, those books which I have hauled over that period. Um, so starting with The Bleak House, which is a Charles Dickens novel, um, at the moment I'm uh, taking part in Victober, which I'm really enjoying. Whether or not I actually get round to this one, I'm not entirely sure, but um, I, um, through this process of doing this reading, I have been loving the style um, of Charles Dickens, um, I'm reading Oliver Twist at the moment, uh, I've been really, really loving um, uh, uh, um, Elizabeth Gaskell's writing style as well. Um, done North and South with the Buddy Read with Milena. Hi, Milena, which has just been awesome. Um, and I'm kind of on that train now, and I feel like at some point I want to get round to this and continue learning more about this period. Um, so I'll be breaking up all my other queer reads with a bit more historic um, English uh, uh, reads in between as well. So that is going to be on my TBR at some point. The next ones that I want to go through are the ones which, while I was down in London town, um, I picked up a few books because I was just doing some work. But while I was down there, um, I uh, uh, went into uh, Watstones, I picked this book up on Being Blue, A Philosophical in uh, Inquiry by William H. Gass. I have heard about this on other people's channels. I'm trying to remember who. Um, I can't remember, but um, because it's such a skinny read, this um, I was like, yes, that sounds cool. And also I had um, collected a credit because of the, the number of books which I purchased through Waterstones. I, um, I was able to basically get this one for free. Um, and <laughs> uh, this focuses on the concept of the colour blue and other associated colours like green and yellow and what they mean elementally and symbolically. Um, and in thinking about how we relate to the world. So I am just in, in, curious about this one. Um, I do enjoy tapping into little bits of philosophy and it broadens my horizons and how I think and feel about my place in the world. And this um, being on the spectrum of colour um, taps into something uh, within me which is arty based and I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. I will give you a go. Um, I have already spoken about this one so I, um, th on my previous video, but this is The Doors of Perception, which is by um, uh, Aud uh, Aldous Huxley, um, uh, who uh, I really enjoy, and if you want to find out the reasons why I'm reading this one, I encourage you to check out that video. I have also mentioned these two, which I got while I was at Gaze the World. Uh, Gaze the Word is a London-based LGBT book um, store, um, but these are also on my autumnal TBR. I have read this one already. I read I, I read it on the train home because it's uh, quite short, but it is spectacular and beautiful. Um, what's really nice is it just tells a very uh, quick little story about this young pansy boy um, growing up experience at school and how he is able to voice um, his concerns about how he's being bullied through the use of these pansies and what impact it has on his local school. It also ends with um, some illustrations of different um, plants and bird life um, and what some of their symbolisms are as well. Um, it's just beautifully, beautifully constructed and illustrated. It's a total coffee table um, viewing point type situation. I think it's a, a wonderful um, storybook for young people to pick up. I can totally imagine it in schools and for them to actually feel empowered through the, reading this book and feeling less isolated and alone and also thinking about ways in which they can speak out which are non-violent but also acts of small um, soft activism. Um, so for all those reasons, I think this book, which is by Paul um, uh, Halfley, um, is a really brilliant read, actually. And I also brought um, A Kept Boy, which is by Robert Rohde. Um, if you have been watching my channel any length of time, one of the earliest ones which I did an arty review on was Robert Rohde, because he was one of the earlier reads I had um, when I started reading queer fiction. 
Um, this was uh, is a second-hand copy. They've got this uh, entire section dedicated to um, second-hand fiction, which uh, just gives a whole breadth of books I would, uh, you just won't see in publications anymore. Um, and Robert Rohde just made me laugh out loud. Um, I am very interested to see his take on what a kept boy is, but what I found really playful and fun with Robert Rohde is that he always kept you on your toes and the story actually goes in unforeseen directions with the, the, the two other books which I've read of his. So I am just fascinated to see what he does in this one. So the next three which I got, um, uh, I went down to Cheltenham Literature Festival and caught up with my friend um, Julia who also has a channel. She hardly ever uh, uploads uh, videos. Yes, I'm calling you out. <laughs> but uh, she said, let's go um, and see Jen Campbell and Simon Savage um, do a talk. Um, they, um, they were also alongside Alex Reeds, who I had never come across um, before. It was really interesting to see their panel. I've got a little bit of footage, which I will share with you now. Do you see your purpose as kind of being in that sense? It's so weird, because there was so many people would be like, I have no interest in books, I have no interest in reading them, I'm not going to pick it up, but I love hearing you guys talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they, like, oh, I feel like I've read the book now, that you guys have all like, like, sat there and mattered about it. So I always find that a bit weird. Like, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to read the book, but you just sat there and listened to us. So I guess it's for some, some people, they read it and they want to hear us like, discussing some of the themes alongside them. So balance. balance. Yes. Well, I mean, I subscribe to some booktube channels uh, and we have very different tastes, but yeah. I still like listening to them chat about it. And maybe, I don't know, is that weird? Is that yeah. like, no, I, don't think I think you're drawn into the, for me, when I'm watching other channels or listening to podcasts, I'm drawn into the people mm -hmm. as well as the bookish content because I love books. Yeah. Um, and some people might say there's only so many books you can get. It's not true. <laughs> there's just always more. Um, and I think it is about who. In terms of myself, I am literally talking to myself because I'm looking at myself on a screen. But what my aim was to feel like it was a conversation, and that's what I love with all of the best podcasts or booktube channels that I watch. It's, it's a conversation with those people. Each of you might talk about the same book, and a broadsheet newspaper will talk about that book. And the audience will be very, very different, I think, for each of you. So I wonder if you could just talk a little around that. I think it's it's... With, well, one, we've got more time than a broadsheet has, so we have, you know, infinitely they have their pages getting less and less. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think, again, it's the, the, they get to know who you are, which is why I think there's more of a conversation around that than there is with the broadsheets. Mm -hmm. And also the broadsheets seem to be much more, the comments are always more snarky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although... But, um, also, yes, uh, the internet allows more people to talk about stuff that they're passionate about and why they're passionate about those things. Um, so um, I'm very passionate about talking about books that have representation of disfigurement and talking about the representation of disfigurement in the media and how it's often handled quite badly because the conversation tends to be controlled by people who don't have a disfigurement or a disability. And that can be said for any number of different things. I'm also passionate about um, advocating for queer literature as well. Um, and that's of, those are often things that get left behind in, in other types of media. Yeah. yeah, and I just think it's a big thing about uh, showing your personality, mm -hmm. showing the, the just generally garnering interests in what you like as well. Because I mean, every so often I post a book on Instagram or on Vero or something, and then I will just say, oh, this is amazing. Look and, then, and people will be like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that, or I like that kind of book. It's just a nice way just to share and just to build that community with one another. Um, and that just, that's the only reason, that's the only way that I feel like social media and that mainstream media, they don't really have that. They can't, cause, like the mainstream media has to stick to a kind of like, well, this is my 500 words, this is it. And you know, this is like what the paper's stance is, where... Uh, this, is, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is me as a person, this is yeah. what I love and this is what I'm trying. I may put it down halfway through, but here it is for you guys. If you want to read it, then. But it was just really interesting to see them on panel just um, talking about uh, uh, their motivations uh, for creating their channel, how they actually plan their time, 
um, different little tips and insights that they have. What I thought was particularly interesting um, was uh, Jen Campbell talking about um, the fact that her conversion rate from book depository actually um, gets about four to five hundred people per month purchasing books um, through her links um, and that's just an incredible thing that um, something like uh, a YouTube channel can help advocate for reading on that scale. Uh, I just thought that was a really, really lovely thing. We also attended Feminists Don't Wear Pink, and other, um, which is um, uh, a panel discussion uh, which had three different speakers um, and they were individually talking about their contributions to this book. Um, present on the panel, which is the reason why I wanted to go, was um, Charlie Craggs, who has also written, uh, sorry, edited and written, or collaborated, uh, to My Trans Sisters, which I have spoken about before, but this is a collection of um, letters to um, the next generation of um, uh, uh, trans sisterhood. Okay, so this is called, it's quite short, it's called A Brief um, History of My Womanhood. 1992, I am born. They write mail on my birth certificate. They wrap me in a blue blanket. They are wrong. 1996, first memory of feeling like I should have been a girl. 2000, called a girl for the first time by a boy on my council estate. I go home to my mum and I cry. 2003, I'm sent to an all boys school. On my first day, a boy in my class tells me I look like a girl. I'm bullied for being a feminine every single day and why I seven years later. Um, 2004, I watched Naja on Big Brother. It's the first time I truly. Oh my god! <laughs> You're ruining my story, Mother Nature! <laughs> I watched Naja on Big Brother. It's the first time I, see, I truly see myself. I have a word to understand who and what I am. And she was. Uh, exactly the same. Um, what was kind of funny and scary for them all is that it was really, really windy that day and um, as they were speaking out against the patriarchy, um, <laughs> the winds were howling around them, uh, bless them all. Um, but th what they were actually saying was really powerful. Other panellists were with Ninko Ali, um, Tasha Bishop, and it was uh, led, the panel was led by, again, the um, curator in this term, uh, Scarlett Curtis. Not many women are told they are born without a womb. In fact, only one in 50,000 of us are. From the day we emerge from our mother's womb, women carry the responsibility of one day holding an another life in their own womb. We still live our lives according to the affirmation that women are mothers, period or periodless. Just to come, almost 30 years ago, I was subjected to one of the most um, one of the worst forms of gender-based violence. It was an act that was meant to break me, it was, and, it, and it nearly did. I almost died at the age of 11 due to complications of FGM. FGM, which stands for female genital mutilation, is a procedure act that involves partial or total removal of the, fe uh, of the external female genitalia or injury to the female genitalia for non-medical reasoning. Non-medical is the key word here. Um, I was seven when I was subjected to FGM, and yes, it was painful. Um, yes, it was painful, but it was also stupid. Feminists thrive on imperfections. They turn weaknesses into strength and vulnerability into power. They take broken systems and find ways to turn the cracks into opportunities. And they take broken girls and they take broken girls and find ways to make them feel whole again. I've spent my whole life, as I think so many women have, feeling like what I had to offer wasn't enough to justify my presence. You were born, like we all were, with the power inside you to make the world a better place. Take this book and use it as a weapon. Give it to a friend, give it to an enemy, rip out your favourite page and pin it on your wall. What you do next is up to you. Whether you start a movement or join Girl Up or simply decide to send a nice text to your mum saying thank you. It's all enough, it's all brilliant, it's all something. Whatever you take from this book, whatever you do next, it's enough. And it was just really, really interesting to see each of their perspectives on that panel and how they were contributing to how they identify as women, uh, but also what they consider um, the current issues of, um, of feminist faces and how they are individually contributing to 
this wider discussion of femininity and uh, being feminist. Uh, but while I was there at Cheltenham Festival, um, we did also do a little bit of shopping and also getting this book signed. Um, so for those who don't know, this is about, uh, this is a memoir um, in terms of uh, Tara's experience of self-determination in terms of being in a place um, which, uh, where she didn't have many opportunities to be educated and she went through a process of um, basically seeking uh, her own education and empowering herself and uh, yeah I just um, I, I wanted to know more. Uh, I, it's not a book which I've read but it is one of those books which I've heard quite a bit about. So I also got um, Banana Yosemitro's um, Kitchen, which is a, a tale of two mothers, transsexualities, it's set in 1887, so it's an older book. I had never actually heard of it, what, uh, though, previously. Um, it's a tiny little thing, um, but it's been a bestseller over in Japan um, for ages, and this is a new edition which celebrates its 30th anniversary, so I'm just, I, I, I was like, okay, I just need to know about this, basically. <laughs> then. Finally, um, I have also gifted myself uh, Sabrina and uh, I ended up posting this because of Eric from the Lyson Re Reader's um, review of this um, uh, when he just went through uh, all the different books on the long list um, and he just described it in such a way which made me go, oh I'm, I'm interested in this and also I was just really curious for this because it's a graphic novel and it had made it onto that prize list which is quite unusual list, um, but also because one of the panellists uh, is um, uh, someone who's written graphic novels it kind of makes sense that they would try and use their influence uh, on that panel but I'm kind of for that, I think that helps diversify um, what is a part of the, the Book of Man list overall um, and it's just great to see something um, which involves both visual art and uh, narrative make it through onto that list. Anyway, those are all the books which I have hauled recently. I just thought I would really wanted to share them with you because I just think they're cool. And I thought you might think they were cool. Uh, let me know if you've picked any of these books up. Let me know if I should be prioritising any of them in particular. Okay, take care. Bye.